you a couple of uh, very interesting features of the of the score uh, I would say framework slash accelerator uh, for the ones who've never heard of score it is um, it is our product Braindrox product that we developed for uh, for Sidecore in in um, uh, to fulfill a couple of um, I would say um, uh, uh, to enhance Sidecore in a way that uh, it will bring um, a little bit faster start for developers and also later on content editors to use um, score um, in their implementations and and websites so um, before I dive into the topic of today's presentation which are the reusable components um, I would like to tell you a little bit about SCORE and um, how the SCORE actually became what it is today. Uh, the early development that we, when we started SCORE, we began it in the, in the times when Sidecore 6.0 was released. And um, at that time, we wanted to make SCORE um, to help us with uh, our internal development uh, um, streams. So it included a reusable API, some of the root templates, a couple of pipelines. Uh, it was um, focused very heavily on page editor first technology. Um, then we started thinking about how to implement multi-tenant support, how to create reusable components. Um, after, um, in the, when Sidecore 7.2 was released, uh, we started thinking and implementing atomic construction. Uh, we also open source MVC area um, code uh, to Sitecore to consume. And uh, at the Sy symposium in 2014, um, we released the version 1.3 with the also training program and solution template with it. Um, at that time, we got our first two sales before the end of the show. Uh, the next release and iteration was the score 2.0. Uh, we released support for Sitecore um, 8.0. We also um, were first to implement page editor share the final support. In 2.1, we came up with score CCF, which stands for score component communication framework, which allows multiple components to communicate with each other. 2.5 uh, brought us uh, brought to the community tiles and search uh, capability. And for uh, score 3.0, which we're targeting at for symposium 2017, we are currently under, um, under the development uh, process. And hopefully we will be able to release it around, around that time. Um, today's score is an accelerator. And much more than that, um, today's score is not just a website in the box. It provides a complete and uh, very thorough development framework. Uh, it also delivers very lightweight and very extensible architecture for supporting multi-tenancy and having uh, multiple websites deployed to the same Sitecore um, instance. Um, we offer, score offers also very, um, um, ease of use for content editors so it's we are trying to implement what you see is what you get as much as we can in order to get um, content editors to actually see what they are trying to do with uh, compiling and creating the pages it also supports automation tools it um, it eases the learning curve uh, and also removes uh, additional complexity when it comes to uh, both development and the maintenance of the of the final solutions and at the end uh, what is important for us developers it um, it offers very rich API on both ends uh, back end and the front end um, here are some of the score facts that I would like to share with you um, so we support Sitecore versions uh, as a product score today Score is a product which we support all the Sitecore versions that are higher than 7 point, release 7.2. It, it is covered with uh, around 1,200 unit tests uh, with uh, almost 90% of code coverage. Um, Score today is distributed as a three 
a NuGet package uh, product. It contains Core, which is a base um, part and contains all the pipelines, events, data templates, um, which can be then used for either extending it or or having it for um, for for usage out of the box from the box. Score UI supports CCF, uh, gives support for CCF, and Score Bootstrap UI um, have um, around 120 components today um, that are built on top of the uh, Twitter Bootstrap. Um, as I said, uh, Score is uh, multi-tenancy friendly, and what uh, what also brings to the table is atomic design concept, which I would like to um, talk just a little bit before we dive into, into the demo. Um, one of the aspects of atomic design is to have, uh, to editors to have flexibility um, um, to do the content uh, management, administration, and also helps with the content authoring experience in general. Um, it brings a clear path um, how to reuse um, renderings, data templates for development teams. Uh, it's very adaptive to any design that you can, you can you can have in your um, in your um, in your day to day work. Uh, it's a page editor first approach, and also um, uh, atomic design um, helps. Um, uh, end users to um, use the, as much as out, uh, marketing automation features uh, possible. Um, benefits of Atomic Design is to build first, design later. So very, very often in the projects that are using SCORE, we are trying to run three, um, um, three st streams simultaneously. So um, content entry, design, our front-end um, work with stylings, and also back-end development. Um, makes teams a lot more modular. It's, uh, it offers uh, more option when it comes to extensions and uh, creating uh, modules for distribution, and also promotes uh, consistency and provides very common design language that um, can be followed on more than just the one website that you that we are trying to um, do for our end clients. Um, so the topics of today um, presentation will be snippet styles and cascading placeholders. Um, so we will try. I will try to explain a little bit more what each one of those means with uh, with also a demo through our um, Brain Juice demo website. So, um, and let's start with the snippets first. Um, the snippet is a part of the page. It can be any part of the page that uh, we, we would like to uh, reuse. It can be a header, footer, carousel, tab set, or even it can be a composition of multi-elements on the page. Um, snippet is made, is built to be reusable. Uh, what is in atomic design, that means it's very similar to what organism is. So if we start from the atoms, that can be, let's say, buttons or small content um, text spots, uh, then we can move to organisms, which can be uh, um, several of them uh, paired together, uh, uh, actually molecules, and then organisms can contain more of those molecules and create more uh, complex structures on the page. Um, snippets can be made of uh, renderings, content, and marketing automa automation uh, procedures as a personalization that comes with, uh, with the Sitecore and also multivariant testing. Um, and today, Snippet has three main parts. Uh, there is a very specific tenants uh, layout with a, um, appropriate page templates, uh, tenant folder, and uh, two snippet components that I would like to show. So uh, let's go back a little bit. And um, can you guys hear me well so far <laughs> and see my screen? I would say yes, no. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, 
all right. I, I hope you guys can hear me. Um, Okay, that means yes. All right, let's move. Let's move. <laughs> um, all right. So um, this is the page, the website that we um, like to demo. Um, we used uh, Brain Juice on our symposium symposium meetings, and also I'm using Brain Juice to show um, a couple of um, score features that our clients, uh, future clients, like to see. So in front of me, I have a front page, which consists of, uh, let's say, 95% of um, score components that are then additionally styled. So there is a header on top. Um, you can see the carousel with uh, three carousel panes. These are um, score link buttons and so on and so forth. I don't want to... I don't want to waste our time to go through um, entire, but this is that like the the general concept of how let's say page can look like with applying only score components on it. Um, so in order to show you how um, snippet works, um, I would like to do um, two things. So let's say um, here. Um, just right above our panel center text, I would like to create a component um, that's going to be, let's say, two column equal. And in the left side, I want to add a YouTube video on the right side, the Google Maps component. And then what I want to do, I want to extract the content of that particular um, portion of the page uh, and pronounce it as a snippet. So let me do this on the left side. Let's do YouTube video. Okay. And um, I want to look and search for the video that does have um, Adriana Lima in it. Let's say, why not? Everybody likes Adriana Lima. So let's see what first is going to show up. So this is also one of the features of the of the score. Um, we create a couple of custom fields, and um, YouTube picker is one of them. So on the right hand side, I want to create a map. Okay, and look for Florianopolis. I promise Diego that I'm going to visit Florianopolis one day, maybe this year, who knows. All right. Florianopolis and say, OK. This is also one of the fields, custom fields, that we created for uh, selecting coordinates for the map. So if I want to preview this page now, see what we did. We have Adriano on the left and Florianopolis on the right. Perfect. OK, so the snippets. Let's say we created this piece of content and we want to reuse it on, let's say, 10 pages. Um, if I want to do that, uh, I'm clicking by the inner structure to call them equal component. There will be on the left side save component with all nested elements as a snippet. So there are actually two ways um, how to create snippets. One is, like I'm just showing, it, what, we, what we'll do, it will, it will extract the uh, entire content of the page, they, uh, of, the, of the portion of the page with the data sources and created it under the snippets folder under the Brain Juice um, main website. So if I look for the... Um, for the Lima snippet, this is where it is. And then from here, I can then edit or change it um, according to, you know, if I want to. But I don't want to. I want to reuse that snippet. And I don't need this anymore. And I want to add it on the page, but this time to be reference uh, to be just reference. So I don't want to use it. I don't want to have it on, on the page itself, but I want to reference that snippet that we just created. 
So Lima snippet is the one that we want to do. So what it, it's going to do, it's going to point to our item in the snippets folder and render it for us. Don't ask me why the map is not here. It probably has something to do with the experience editor, but um, if we save the page. The snippet is being rendered in its own context. And by clicking here, we can then go dive and edit it if we want to. All right, so after the save, everything is cool. And in the preview, we can also see um, the same result. Now, um, there are situations when content editors wants to create some kind of like a pattern. Um, situation of the or arrange the components in a way that we can do literally copy paste of the same content into multiple in, into different pages and then modify them according to um, according to our needs so that we can do that as well um, in the way how that will work is to to add the snippet and run it as a snippet macro so what this function and this component actually will do, it will copy everything that lives under the under our Lima snippets, all the maps and the videos, and it will actually bring it to the page for further further changes or use. All right save page and leave it as it is so in order to show you just a little bit more about snippets uh, there is also a way to create snippets out from scratch so under the snippets um, I would like to let's say create uh, um, let's see what Okay, see this is our second snippet. And um, since, as I said, snippet uses its own layout and also um, special template, which is inherited from the actual score snippet, um, here we can also dive and create um, structures that we would like to uh, reuse further on. Uh, there are a couple of um, cool features that Snippet um, offers is we can create, we can select the Snippet layout. If we want to uh, if we want to see and, and, and look how the Snippet is going to be rendered uh, in the full uh, full width of the screen or when it's tall or regular size, we can also um, activate al alternative Snippet context and see how the snippet is going to be rendered on some of the pages in our content tree. So uh, these are also uh, nice features and the options that we have on our disposal. OK. The next thing that I would like to cover would be um, tiles. Um, so basically, um, a tile uh, presents a content um, that can be um, shared across the multiple pages on our website and uh, we can maintain and manage that content in one place. So also um, Tile gives us the ability to create reusable con con uh, content in the context of the attached page and also insert that particular tile on some other pages in our... So it's basically very similar what Snippet does but it will be more clear when I dive into the in, into the demo, and you will see a little resemblance of what actually tile uh, means. Uh, there are three tiles given by default in Score: um, default, autocomplete, and search result. Um, they are actually very self-explanatory. Uh, the autocomplete uh, we use for. Uh, defining the reusable uh, piece of the content that can be used in the autocomplete uh, drop-down. 
and the search result is then used for producing the HTML that's going to be uh, pushed to, um, let's say, um, some search searching index uh, um, and searching index like Lucene or um, Solar uh, in, 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 and even Algolia. We've used tiles with Algolia in the past. Um, the tile folder, um, um, as I said, there are three, time, three types given by default. And the type folder is created underneath an item each time when we um, um, add a page or when we add it to the standard fields. Uh, the items are rendered when a tile, uh, tile items are rendered when tile item is added to the page. Um, we can use uh, three types of components to render the certain tile on the page. Featured page tile, page tile link, and page tile uh, title. So, let me show you an example on um, how tiles can be very, very useful in, uh, in certain situations. Uh, this is the search page for, um, for the brain juice, uh, which is also constructed by uh, using score components. On the top, we have um, a search input. And on the main page, on the right-hand side, there are a list of products that are being rendered. Um, if we click on a quick view, there's going to be um, a portion of the product that we can um, find out a little bit more about it and also um, cycle through a couple of tab sets, uh, which will actually change the image gallery as well. Um, on the left side, there is um, a faceting search score component. And you can see in the certain positions in the, on the page, there are special uh, like feature uh, content items. Now, um, you, can, you can try to guess that if, let's say, if we navigate to the product itself, uh, this is the product detail page with very similar um, capabilities, although here we have a little bit more information about the product, but the gallery on the left and, uh, and um, selections, um, our product selections are still here. Um, each product page in this case uh, have a couple of tiles attached. Um, and I will be showing this shortly. Um, so, let's navigate to one of those uh, pages. Let's do, uh, 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 let's say, Dessert Wine Madeira 2010. So, the product page in this case have its product variations, some of the attributes, images. Um, but we, we're going to be focused uh, not just on the content, which is the product detail page, but the part that goes on the top, which says view tiles. Um, here we can see those three tiles that we uh, would like to use in our case. Autocomplete, this is a quick view tile, which we show um, each time when we click on the quick view. And also, there is a search result tile, which has um, a product, um, how it's going to look like when we pull the search out. So through here, we can add more tiles. We can edit the existing tiles in the same way as any other score component. So this is the, um, the image. There is a product flag component. Uh, this is a product tile quick product title and product tier. We can also, if we want, we can go ahead and add uh, an other renderings to the, to the, to the tile set. And uh, what it's essentially tile at the end is, is, is a snippet. Now, the difference between tiles and the snippets is that um, with having, um, having tiles organized on the pages, we can, we can easily extract its content and uh, deliver them to either maybe some kind of third-party 
uh, consumer or in in the case in the brain on the brain juice brain juice we can have them displayed uh, on uh, on other portions of the pages programmatically so each of these results are actually coming from uh, Lucene index uh, with the HTML added as uh, one as one of the of the fields okay I hope hope it makes sense so far um, and um, I will stop here and just ask uh, if you if you guys have any questions so far or should I should I move forward? No questions here uh, online. Just checking online to see if anyone online has any questions. Just a second, Ivan. Okay. Yeah, we do have an online question. One sec. Mm -hmm. Ivan, recently Sitecore has announced SXA becoming mm -hmm. free uh, or actually part of the license of Sitecore itself. My mm -hmm. question is how that changes strategically the way score positions itself in the market, if it changes anything in the in the planes in the short or medium term for brain jocks? For now? Reacti. Okay, that's a, that's a good question. For now, it doesn't it doesn't change a lot on the short term. Uh, we still we still have to evaluate the uh, the impact of such uh, uh, such decision. But um, Score is a very mature product today. Um, we have our uh, very long base of of the clients. Uh, we invest um, a lot in keeping up with the, the most recent. Um, Sidecore updates, and we also very, we are very careful with um, implementing the best practices that Sidecore um, uh, convey. So, score today is um, score today doesn't change anything what Sidecore does um, out out from the box. It is just uh, an um, an upgrade to uh, existing features of Sidecore. So we will see. Uh, for now, it doesn't it doesn't change a lot for us. We we will keep going as as before. All right, that's the only question you got here, Ivan. You can proceed. Okay. All right. So um, some of the things that um, tiles can do, and I will try to demo this. Um, uh, uh, by using a um, couple of uh, tile feature um, components. So here we can add our tiles as a features to the pages. So let's say I want to have uh, a tile that's going to, um, um, component that's going to present some of our tiles that um, we have on the product pages. We can easily, easily do that. Um, this particular component will allow us to create and actually select um, which page we want to use in order to harvest one of its tiles. So if I go and um, select our Madeira um, 2010 wine, um, I would like to use, um, let's say, search result tile. Hopefully this will work. I haven't tested this. So this is the first time that I'm doing this on on uh, on this level. Okay, and uh, let's do a preview and see what's going to happen. Okay, so this is our tile that's going to be rendered below below the map. Um, so you can you can imagine um, different types of different usage of such flexibility um, and what we've learned and so far in our projects this helps very much uh, it brings a lot of help to our content editors at the end and how they actually minimize the uh, the effort of recreating the same components all over again and it it organized the uh, the content tree 
uh, in a much better way than uh, than before. Okay, so um, the next topic I have for today would be uh, the ca cascading placeholders. Um, and this is also one of the very, um, very interesting features when it comes to uh, um, reusability of components and the content on, uh, on multiple pages. Um, this feature what actually allows our editors to push placeholder content down the site hierarchy. It means that we can select um, a certain portion of the page and uh, which is the actual placeholder and make it cascadable. It means that every single page item that lives under the, the under that page will collect the content from that um, uh, placeholder. Um, receiving pages can still add content to that same placeholder uh, above cascaded elements. And what you can do also, you can recascade placeholders, which is also a uh, very, very interesting feature to do. Uh, for now, cascading is not supported on standard values uh, because of the obvious reasons. Um, maybe in future we will tackle that as well, but um, for now, um, my, next, my next actual... Um, uh, 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 um, small demo will be to show how cas cascading placeholders can uh, be useful uh, in the in the in assembling the pages. Um, so uh, on the top of our home page, uh, you can see there is a snippet that actually inserts the header component with its mega menu. Now, if you go one step above, we can see that the uh, above page content placeholder is actually cascaded. So with having the uh, this entire um, placeholder cascaded, each page that is, let's say, that lives under the home page will have um, cascaded element added to it. And it's, uh, it's clearly written that um, this is cascaded element home, so it comes from the home page. We can edit it, but we can still, in the above page content, we can still um, add components to it. So um, this is this will be all for me at this point, and um, I will I will be open for any questions that um, you guys might have. Thank you very much, Ivan. So just looking here, uh, whether we have any questions. Uh, uh, one question that we got here, Ivan, mm -hmm. whether this supports the Hill Lakes, um, you know, best practices. So we, today, we work with a client that, um, that created their enterprise layer based on the Helix best, best practices. So my answer is yes. There is no there is no limitation on how you want to how you want to use Score at the end. Um, as I said, um, Score is um, um, distributed through um, um, three NuGet packages and. Um, it means that you can very easily um, create your um, your CI environment if needed, and and have it as a part of your of your end end project in whichever way you want to construct it. So um, same same goes with uh, with using Score with um, any let's say. Um, different ways of, uh, let's say, SAS. you can use SAS or less, or you can, um, you can use um, a, a knockout, you can use Angular with it. You can, um, I've, I personally um, did both on, uh, on together with score components. 
uh, we we haven't got a cross of situation when we had to say oh you know what in this particular example you and uh, project you cannot use core um, there are certain dependencies for example um, in order to make um, in order to to have score to store components to work uh, they require uh, require JS for example we use um, match height as one of the libraries to uh, um, to match the height of the uh, of the boxes uh, uh, in the product and um, I cannot think of any any other like requirement that that, that is today um, that you have to follow but we keep we keep score to be very simple extens extendable and uh, easy to use for for both ends developers and end users um, hey Ivan uh, Vinicius here uh, I have a question mm -hmm. regarding for content authors um, do you have any um, I don't know maybe how well uh, the the brain score uh, improves the life for content authors so do you mean like the live examples of the websites built with score or just like um, in general how how it improves their their everyday life yeah in general so um, there are two I, I like to think about people who are using sidecore I, I like to think of them in two different groups the ones that are used to um, content entry approach uh, to build everything uh, um, in a very old-fashioned way so that it you know you you have to follow certain rules you have to follow certain uh, methodology of how you want to add renderings how you know do things manually uh, uh, throughout the uh, uh, um, rendering um, view and then you have um, users who who did some work or content entry in the experience editor mode um, we we treat approach each of those groups equally at the start so um, every person who um, um, is going to use score at the end they go through our training in order to um, adopt the methodology and the whole principle of how to you know how to name the highlight how to name uh, data sources wait where to store data sources what are the options that you have for example green folders for local content red folders for uh, multi websites you know blue folders for sharing it across the uh, 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 um, uh, page items under the same site teach them how to um, how to uh, um, assemble the content and uh, it's it's a learning curve uh, at first they um, there are a lot of um, things you you have to understand of you know how page layouts are uh, what can you do with page layouts what, how how to nest inner uh, structurals which components have uh, which rendering parameters that you can use so um, it all it, it, it depends a lot of, on experience previous experience and exposure to sidecore in general and then uh, we just you know upgrade them to the level uh, that they are comfortable with using score we haven't had uh, problems with uh, with teaching our clients how to use it uh, but it's it's can it can vary from you know couple of week from one week or a couple of weeks depending on the depending on the case so Ivan we got another question here I'll, I'll be asking on behalf of Edipo here so essentially he mm -hmm. what he's trying to figure out is whether snippets support personalization just like you know sidecar out of the box when you're working with yes the answer is yeah answer is yes yeah like any other component yep okay uh, one more um, for the developer perspective what kind of uh, this this score for instance has provides a, a model for solutions 
uh, imposes uh, any kind of um, architecture pattern and what kind of tools uh, does it provide to the, the developer himself? Mm -hmm. I'll give some examples, for instance, code generation, extensions, what kind of mm -hmm. things to improve to, to easy the day-by-day -day life of a developer? Does okay. So um, with each new project, I, I hope you guys see my screen now because I switched to the, uh, my virtual machine. This is the example for, Sorry, yes? Can you, can you just zoom in a little bit? Oh, I can try. <laughs> That's going to be, oh. all right, let me see. Um, work, then we'll try with that one. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is it better? Yep. Okay. Right. So this is, this is the example of, um, of like a freshly new scaffolded uh, website. So let's say you as a developer, you have to start with a new project. So you know how to start, you know, where, where to, what, what, what to do first. Um, there are two, um, two pieces of the puzzle. One is to scaffold the solution itself. And then the other uh, um, follow-up task is to scaffold the, um, the uh, a tenant itself so i can i can just really quick go through both of them so what what you see in front of me is the um, is how um, for example a site called my site which is a part of my solution would look like so there are like four or five parameters that you enter and what what the process is going to do for you it's going to create a um, couple of class libraries, TDS uh, projects, and also the, the web solution. And you can see the areas part where uh, the my site then will have its own part where you're going to start creating controllers. There will be a, a SAS folder with, uh, with adding um, your definitions. It's going to also contain bootstrap um, SAS files for any kind of modification that you want to do along the way. Um, there is a part for score and also all the, uh, all the site specific uh, uh, score components that you want to style uh, later on. The views part uh, is where you, you know, naturally is going to start, you're going to look and create your views. Um, my site uh, area registration, where you're going to register your uh, your routes, models for adding models, and um, and uh, web configs uh, for any kind of additional tweaks. Um, environments, on the other hand, will have its um, uh, place, which is tied with the build profiles in order to create a multiple um, configuration. Uh, um, um, patches to Sitecore, and this is this is basically the start. Uh, the layout itself, um, I don't know if how much time do we have, but the later will will do um, some of the heavy lifting. So it will load your uh, dependencies through uh, required config JS, and also add um, necessary placeholders for for the quick start of of the project. Um, now, when it comes to um, multi-tenancy now, you can, you can notice that uh, what we like to, you know, um, tell to our um, clients and also what we do internally, each website has its own solution. There are many reasons why, um, and they are very, very tightly coupled with how the CI should be uh, set up so that with the um, light governance, you can have a control on how these actual websites um, are gonna be deployed one day to, uh, to the same Sitecore um, uh, instance. Um, so this is the part when it comes to solution. Um, just try to zoom it out. And uh, when it comes to the tenant itself, creating tenant, Will um, will run set of um, um, uh, uh, um, PowerShell scripts that will give you 
the ability to uh, already define home page um, selections out from the box so that you can kick uh, the tires quickly a uh, couple of uh, colors and uh, styles for for us to modify and also um, it will create some of the necessary parts in the in the layouts for the renderings models so uh, once you synchronize back your um, your tenant that we just created and it's very easy thing to do actually there is uh, a new site score um, tenant option that will do this all for you you will synchronize it back to your project and you're ready to go I hope that um, gives you a little bit more uh, um, details on the architecture side yeah, of it. I was uh, uh, thinking here, Ivan, he, it answers his question. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Online, sorry. All right, no questions online. So, okay. So, yeah, thank you very much, Ivan. I myself can, can say that, you know, I've been using SCORE on our project and, you know, it really helps the life of the developer, you know, like you can set it up a whole solution in, you know, in a website running like just a few minutes, which is impressive. I was really impressed when I started working at BrainJocks because you know, other than making your life easier, it's fast to use. So I was, I'm really impressed with it myself. So yeah, thanks for showing that event. No problem. I hope you guys enjoy it. Well, a big round of applause for you, sir. Well deserved. <laughs> Thank you. You, have a, you guys have a full 